Hello and welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about finding the expected value and the variance and standard deviation of discrete random variables. Okay, so there's not a ton to talk about in this section. It's really more of an applied section. Okay, but let's first talk about kind of what an expected value is. All right, so we've seen how to find the mean of a data set or, or something like that before. And the expected value is essentially the mean of a random variable. Right? It's if, we, if this were to play out over time, what value would we expect to eventually kind of converge to? All right, so the way we find this for a discrete random variable, it's, it's pretty much just a weighted average. Right? We take each possible value of x, weight its probability, and then add them all up. So in symbols, mathematically, that's what this says. All right, so take each value of x, multiply it by its probability, do that for each value of x, and then add them all up. So easy enough. So finding the expected value of a discrete random variable, really not too bad. Just take a weighted average. All right, the next step after that is then finding our variance and by extension the standard deviation. Now there is a little bit more to this, right? but we know the first step to finding a variance or standard deviation is always going to be to find our mean. right? It's, it's essentially a supplement to that mean. Okay, so that's going to be the first step, find that expected value. But it's still very similar to what we've seen before. Okay, and what I'm going to show you here are actually, we'll end up seeing two different formulas to do this. The first I'm going to call here the theoretical formula. Okay, so it's similar to what we've seen before. We find our mean, that's mu, x minus mu, find our deviations, square them. Okay, so this, up until this point, this looks very similar. But now, we again weight by our probabilities and then add them all up. So this is essentially a weighted average of those squared deviations. That's how we find our variance. Okay, then we know how to get from a variance to a standard deviation. We just take the square root once I've found my variance. All right, so not bad, um, especially for a discrete random variable with a smaller number of values. It's totally doable that way with the theoretical formula. But here's something that I want to show you for maybe more complex applications. And that is our, our computational formula. Okay, so that expected value formula that we saw, it's, it's also used as an operator in, in other contexts to find things like moments and, and stuff like that. Um, but just a general, a general property of the expected value is this. If we take the expected value of a function, okay, that's our function here, h of x, it's just the function weighted by its probabilities, sum them all up. Okay, so whatever's inside the brackets, weight it by its probability, sum it all up. All right, so that's, that's how we find the expected value of a function. That helps us, and this, we won't have to do too much with this right now, but that helps us because if we take that theoretical formula of the variance, we do some algebra, right, we can end up with this form of the variance. Okay, I can use this fact, plug it in here, if I think about this as a function, right, so this is essentially x squared times f of x, that is the expected value not of x, but the expected value of x squared. So we can rewrite the variance as expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Notice here, these look similar, but expected value is not a linear function. Okay, these, these two things do not mean the same thing. And if they did, that would be stupid because this would just be this minus this would always be zero. Okay, so... Um, we don't have to worry too much about the, the algebra or the math behind what we're doing here. Um, in some classes, you might be asked to kind of show this, to prove this. Um, but the point here is this is kind of a shortcut way of doing this. Now, we introduce it here because it can be useful with discrete random variables, but it's going to be really useful 
with continuous random variables in some applications. Okay, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So just remembering that the variance can be written like this, expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. All right, so expected value, variance, standard deviation, two different kind of forms of the formula for variance and standard deviation. That's all we've got here. So we'll look at an example of this in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.